normally what I say to these people is if you want to see sharks, go to SeaWorld. This is a movie studio, not an aquarium. However, today, <laughs> today I do have a shark to show you. It's right over here on your right, and you look disappointed. You probably wanted a live one, didn't you? Nope, that's it. Oh, no. Tell me that's not what I think it is out there in the water. Oh, come on. How many sharks do we have in this pond? Anyway, you know what? Let me get that guy out of the water. Hang on, there's a guy in there living in a mountain. Hey, dude! Hey, get out of there, man! There's a shark out there! You know what? Let me try the Paul Lind approach. Oh, get out of there, you big hamburger! What's the matter with you? Oh, look at that. Well, now he is hamburger. Alright, well... Obviously, our guy's caught a shark, not the shark. Take a look out in the middle of the lake. We've got a yellow buoy out there with some bait attached to it. Let's see if the shark takes the bait. Oh, the bait. We sure got something, boy. Look at that. See every day. What's the course for me? Go to the right hand side of the tank. Shark! Oh, oh, oh. Ah! 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 Well, Dan, you just survived an encounter with Bruce, the mechanical shark from Jaws. And I know what a lot of you are probably thinking. Boy, that shark looked cheesy and fake up close, didn't it? So tell me something, what was it all that screaming back there, huh? <laughs> Actually, that shark is far more reliable and sophisticated than the one that was used in the movie. If you don't believe me, well, just ask Mr. Spielberg. Imagine Mark Lyon shark. The shark was frustrated. It didn't really work all the time. It didn't work at all. Wherever you were on the island, you could hear the radio. They were always saying, the shark is not working. With the shark is not working. We just waited around. We just waited around. The shark worked well enough for a while there and the music all the time. So I really owe the shark a lot. Shark from Finding Nemo. Our Bruce came first. Now there's a uh, modestly successful little TV show on ABC. Stereo Lane, that's right. Now these houses weren't always used for desperate housewives. They've actually been standing here for a number of years. Take for instance on your left, Gabrielle's house, this orange one on your left. That was also Jimmy Stewart's house from the movie Harvey. Right next door, this lavender house, the one that Bob and Lee live in. That was also 1313 Mockingbird Lane, the home of the Munsters. We're next door to that, Susan's house, this yellow one on your left, that was the Hardy Boys house, Parker Stevenson and Sean Cassidy live there. Over here on your right, Bree's house at the Brick Pathway, that was the Hanson home from Providence. And on your left, Lynette's house, that's the green one on your left, that was Ronald Reagan's house from the movie Bedtime for Bonzo. Now, this is just me, but I think that Bedtime for Bonzo should be required viewing in school history classes, because think about it, where else? Where else do you get to see a United States president get mashed potatoes flung in his face? If you don't believe me, watch the movie. It happens. Now, for those of you that are not familiar with Desperate Housewives, both of you, here's a quick primer. Check this out. Next morning, E.D. Britt decided to announce a return to Wisteria Lane. Okay, you're not going to believe this, but she's back. Is that really you? You know someone else might have body like this? It always gets stuck up there. I don't know why it always gets stuck. Right there, it's just... Oh well, I guess we're just have to stare at Edie in a bathing suit washing a car for the rest of the tour. Young lady, your mom's not on the tram, is she? Because <laughs> your dad's looking awfully happy at the concept of staring at Edie in a bathing suit with a... Yeah, dude, I've, both you guys have seen... ...worked for months to create a living, breathing hotel. When it was all done, they built an entire city. In a fantasy world of Dr. Seuss, it became a reality. Alrighty, 
folks. Now, over here on your right-hand side, it's Whoville from The Grinch. Now, The Grinch stars, of course, Jim Carrey, co-stars Jeffrey Tambor from The Larry Sanders Show, and Christine Baranski from Mamma Mia. The Grinch was a certifiably psycho kind of character, but right now I think we need to talk about Alfred Hitchcock's kind of psycho. For just a bit, we're going to let you get some pictures of this world-famous set. You can Photoshop out Whoville if you have to, because, you know, honestly, if you have Whoville in the background, it kind of kills the effect, so you can, you can get rid of that with uh, Photoshop or something like that. And, uh, oh my goodness, will you look at that. You know, if this were a, if this were Halloween Horror Nights, this wouldn't shock me. But the fact is, it's May, and we just had Mother's Day. That's a heck of a present. You, you know, sir, I might suggest flowers and candy might be... Whoa, okay. Uh, if I didn't know any better, I'd say that was Norman Bates. I'm kind of freaked out by this. In fact, I think Han Solo put it best. I have a bad feeling about this. Just, yeah. You know what, uh, Paul? We might have overstayed our welcome. I don't like the way he's looking at this little girl here. I think we better get going. Better check out of the Bates Motel. Oh my goodness, will you look at it? Keep your arms and legs inside. If you lose a limb, it just creates more paperwork for me. Look out. Yeah. Right into the heart of this colossal set. And we're actually gonna stop the tram, specifically so that you can stand up and get some amazing shots. So. Hang on tight, everybody, and have those cameras ready. Now, this amazing set is what remains of the neighborhood where Tom Cruise hides out in the movie. And yes, folks, that is a real plane that was destroyed just for this scene. Folks, please stay seated. You'll get your chance, I promise. Production designer Rick Carter. The airplane crash site set is a perfect example of a set that is all designed around a vision of Stephen. Again, to sit down and talk about the world. Well, I thought, what if the 747 goes down right in a big neighborhood? Because it's, it's just something you don't see. You're doing good. You're doing good. You're doing good. Listen, listen, I want you to close your eyes, okay? Close. Robbie, get in. Get in. seen Jurassic Park 3 show of hands. Take, three. Take a look over here on your left hand side. Just behind the airplane tail you might catch a glimpse of one of the InGen lab buildings of Jurassic Park 3. Now here's a little something to snack on. That building was sitting there the entire time they were making War of the Worlds. Just keep that in the back of your heads the next time you watch War of the Worlds. Recognize that music playing underneath Whoopi too. It was of course from Jaws. And speaking of things like Jaws, Paul's late. Someone robbed the coffin. Oh man, scarab beetles. <laughs> Seems to me the willies, those creepy bugs.
Beatles. Why did it have to be scarab Beatles? Oh, they're attracting the bright lights. They're covering up the lights. Ruby, do something. This is not good.